Welcome to Santiago de Querétaro, one of our favorite cities in all of Mexico. been to before and this time around we've decided to return for two whole months to test it out and see if it's a candidate as a future home. Today we're going to show you around the city and tell you why we love it so much. Querétaro is a UNESCO World Heritage Site filled with history so make sure you have that cafecito ready. There's so much to love about the city and we're excited to share why it's such a strong contender for home for us. First there's the weather. It has amazing climate all year round, not too cold, not too hot not too humid, between 75 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the year. And it's located right in the heart of Mexico within driving distance to many other places that we enjoy visiting like Zacatecas, San Luis Potosí, and Mexico City. It's super important to us to have access to a big international airport for traveling, of course. We'll show you the city in a moment, but first things first. Brunch a la Patrona, Barbacoa Artesanal. Shout out to La Carencita for the recommendation. Super yummy. Look at that, look at how soft. No maximo. No maximo. We're big fans of their tortillas, which are handmade fresh with your order. What a way to start the day. All right, time to start the tour. I think this is our third or fourth time in Querétaro and every time we've been here, there's been something different in this street. There's some sort of cool art exhibit going on. What color are you? I'm gonna get lost in here. Oh cool, that was super cool. This trippy experience brings us to one of our favorite spots in Querétaro. <gasps> yes! La Fabrica del Chocolate. I know we just ate, but there's always room for dessert, right? We can't say no to fresh churros. Every time we come here, we gotta make sure we fulfill our chocolate and mole craving. Here we got our concha. Mm, concha. It might not look like a concha, but it's more like a panini concha filled with mole, queso, and chocolate at the top. Super, super yummy. This is so good that it's made two of our vlogs. We also got ourselves some churros to dip with chocolate and The best and Jenny's favorite, a tamale, a chocolate tamale with double the chocolate, double the fun. This is Jenny's favorite. My thing is definitely la concha de mole. Mm. This double chocolate tamale brings me so much happiness. Man, this concha is dinner and dessert. Mm. Mm. Oh, that's hot. That's hot. It's really nice to see a colonial city that honors its indigenous roots, something I can't say the same for other Mexican cities. This one right here is a monument dedicated to El Danzante Conchero Chichimeca. One of the things we love about Querétaro is the fact that it's filled with a bunch of really cool walking streets, pedestrian streets, I mean, there are people <laughs> walking all over, enjoying their weekend. So it's a great city just to walk and enjoy the buildings. And safety makes it so much better. You can walk around at any time of the day and it's pretty safe. It's such a family-oriented city and it helps that there are so many parks, jardines to enjoy for all ages. People just hanging out, chilling on the benches. This is the hot spot by Charnovio. And you can find a bunch of couples here, you know, making out, having a good time, relaxing, having an ice cream. Cool date spot. This is Sardin Cinea, one of the main parks in all of Querétaro. It is located right in the centro. It's a place where they also host most of the culture events on weekends. As you can see, they're setting up for tonight. Tonight is Saturday, so we're definitely going to check out the culture. That's how I know that this place is the main park in all of Querétaro. It has a boom, a kiosk right in the center for this event. Uh, this is the spot to ask someone to be your girlfriend or boyfriend. And a great proposal spot too. Nice view. So will you marry me? I'm already married to you, silly. Hey, me guardo el anillo. 
Other main parks in Centro are Mariano de las Casas, where you'll find the Querétaro letters and the dancing fountain, Jardín Guerrero, a park also popular for cultural events, and the Alameda, the largest park in Centro. Even though it's a city of just over a million people, I love that there are tons of green spaces, parks, and places for people to come together and just hang out. That to me says a lot about city and nature balance and safety. To see families out and about hanging out any time of day, I love that. This is Plaza de Armas, aka Plaza de la Independencia, and I think this just might be my favorite jardín in all of Querétaro. Definitely one of the most important in Querétaro and probably all of Mexico. Yep, we'll tell you why in a moment. Taking walks through here is so, so relaxing. Look at all this green. Love it. Puppy Fountain, or La Fuente de los Perritos, but locals know it as La Fuente de los Miones. It does kind of look like they're peeing the whole time, though. It sounds like it. <laughs> they're peeing out of their necks, I don't know. Mira que rico. Son elotes, que más vendes? Elotes, esquites y tostesquites. Ah, tostesquites. Eh, lleva los tostitos, encima lleva queso amarillo, le ponemos esquites, mayonesa, queso y algún topping de fritura que tú gustes. Igual salsas de las que tenemos en la casa o ya sean de envase. This business card is hilarious, I like it. It says, right off the bat, it says elote gratis, right? But once you read in between the lines, it's en la compra de tu elote, lleva gratis otra servilleta. <laughs> is it in English? <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> My favorite thing about the plazas and jardines are these restaurants with patio seating. I'm such a sucker for patio seating. There are coffee shops all along these portales here. I love it. I can just sit here, enjoy coffee, and enjoy the music from the expensive restaurant across the street. And you can get a really good carajillo right here at Misa Cafe. Oh my I God. think Karencita would agree. It's probably one yes. of the best carajillos. Have you had a carajillo yeah. before? It's espresso with licor 43, a sweet, delicious liquor. Mm. Mm. This plaza and monument is dedicated to one of the most badass women in Mexican history. She is known as La Corregidora, and if you don't know who she is, then listen up because she is a hero we should all know about. Most people are familiar with Miguel Hidalgo's cry for independence that launched the revolution against the Spanish. And if you don't know what we're talking about, we have a great video for you. Make sure to check it out with the link up here. But very few know about La Corregidora and her role in the Mexican independence. She is the one to truly light the match to the independence. Allow me to explain. Her name was Josefa Ortiz de Dominguez and she was a woman way ahead of her time. It was super rare for a woman to have the position that she did as a corregidora. But wait, what exactly is a corregidora? A corregidora or corregidora is a person of local government authority who had about the same amount of power as a governor. Both she and her husband were corregidores for Querétaro. So here's the story. Josefa and her husband were working with Miguel Hidalgo and Ignacio Allende to revolt and conspire against the Spanish. There were previous attempts to conspire, but the Querétaro one was the one that succeeded. The Spanish found out about their plot and showed up to their home in Querétaro. The Dominguez home, that is. Her husband wanted to do anything he could to cover up any suspicion, so he told his wife to be quiet. But knowing how fierce and determined she was, he decided to lock her in a room upstairs instead, basically to prevent her from saying anything incriminating. But being the force of nature that she was, she figured out a way to pass along a message to their colleague downstairs. The story says that she stomped on the ground three times to alert him that something was going on related to their conspiracy. His name was Ignacio Perez and he successfully receives her message and takes off on horseback from Santiago de Querétaro all the way to Dolores, Guanajuato, where Miguel Hidalgo and Ignacio Allende were ready to start the cry of independence. Kind of reminds me of Paul Revere. Kind of, yeah. This allowed Miguel Hidalgo and Ignacio Allende to launch the revolution in time before the Spanish caught up to them. So thanks to her, who knows what Mexico would be today. And this is it. This is a Dominguez house where the Mexican Revolution truly began. History, Mexican history. Maybe that's where Zapateado comes from. Anybody thought of that? Huh? And now I understand why Plaza de Armas is also known as Plaza de Independencia. 
because of the Dominguez house. It's where the independence really began. But that independence was short-lived, and if you stick around with us, you'll find out why. Ah, yes. Another important figure to know around Querétaro is this one right here. I seriously want all of them. Like if I had a house, I would buy one in every color, every size. They're just so adorable. I can have one? <laughs> this is it. This is the one. This is Lele, also known as Malele or Maria dolls. It's a rag doll that you'll see all throughout Querétaro and now most of Mexico. She's super popular and has a really cool story that we're going to be taking a road trip for and saving for later, so stay tuned for that vlog. And last but not least, if there is one place in Querétaro that embodies its history, architecture and culture, it's El Mirador de los Arcos. The Pink Stone Monument is one of the most complete aqueduct structures in Mexico at 74 arches long. And it's part of Querétaro's magic because legend says that aside from the need for clean water, the construction of the aqueduct was fueled by a forbidden love story between a Spanish royalty and a nun, who also happened to be his wife's niece. Well, that brings us to the end. We hope you enjoyed hanging around Querétaro with us. And if you haven't already, be sure to check out our previous Querétaro vlogs from the last time we were here. We're here, like we said, for two months, so we've got some other videos in the works for you, including a wine vlog that features not only the Querétaro wines, but wines throughout Mexico. It's been a project that we've been working on for many months, and we're really excited to be putting that up very soon. Thank you so much. Se cuidan, se bañan, y nos vemos hasta la próxima. Ciao.